Thank you, Mr. President. I rise today to join my good friend from Arkansas, John Bozeman, who's the ranking member on our Ag Committee. He's organized this colloquy that we have uh, to talk about how important it is that we support our farmers and ranchers. I mean, in my home state of North Dakota right now, we have terrible drought, and our farmers and our ranchers are up against it. And I think the presiding officer, I think in your state you're having real drought as well. And so it, it's a tough time for our farmers and ranchers, and, and we need to be out there doing everything we can to help them and support them. Uh, but instead, uh, the Biden administration uh, is looking at, uh, you know, tax increases. And uh, that is going to be a, a big, big problem uh, for them. And so we're here today to talk about that. Our farmers and ranchers produce the highest quality, lowest cost food supply in the world. And they continue to navigate volatile commodity prices, complex global trade uncertainties, unpredictable weather, and as I said, including drought uh, this year in North Dakota and across much of the West, and also the COVID pandemic. So they've been dealing with all of these things. Throughout these numerous challenges, our producers have continued to put food on the shelves at supermarkets and on the tables of families around the world, not just in this country, but around the world. And in this country, every single American benefits every single day from what our farmers and ranchers do, and that's produced the highest quality, lowest cost food supply in the world. Yet rather than help improve the economic outlook for our producers and strengthen our ag supply chain, the Biden administration has put forth tax and spend policy proposals that would further increase the cost of food production, harm family farmers and ranchers, and reduce our economic growth, all as we're working to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. The trillions that Democrats in Congress have already spent this year have led to a $2.2 trillion budget deficit through the first nine months of the fiscal year, and we're on track to end the year with a deficit of more than $3 trillion, the second largest deficit since World War II. With our national debt already at $28 trillion, we simply cannot afford to spend more. The American people are beginning to feel the impacts of those spending policies. The prices of consumer goods are increasing at the fastest rate since 2008. Just last week, the Department of Labor released data showing that inflation has increased to 5.4%, the largest year-over-year -year gain since 2008. This includes farm country, where producers are facing increased costs for everything from fertilizer to fencing supplies to combines and tractors. As we watch inflation grow faster than American workers' paychecks wiping out wage gains and leaving American families behind, the Biden administration is planning an even larger $3.5 trillion tax and spend package that will bring economic harm to American workers, small businesses, and farmers and ranchers. For example, the Biden administration and Democrats in Congress have proposed to eliminate stepped-up basis a tax provision that prevents family-owned farms and ranches from being hit with a crippling tax bill when a family member passes away. Under current law, when passing down a family farm or ranch to the next generation, the tax basis is stepped up to fair market value, preventing a large tax bill on the next generation of farmers. In addition to increasing the tax bill on multi-generation Farmers and ranchers repealing stepped-up basis would add significant complexity to farmers and ranchers' tax filing process. In fact, when a Democrat Congress previously tried to repeal stepped-up basis in the 1976 Tax Reform Act, it was labeled by the New York Times as, quote, impossibly unworkable. Congress at the time must have agreed because the provision was never implemented and was ultimately repealed four years later in 1980. The impacts of a repeal of stepped-up basis would not only be felt by our farmers and ranchers, but it would also impact small businesses and their employees and supplementary services. A recent report from Ernst & Young estimates the repeal of stepped-up basis would result in the loss of 80,000 jobs in each of the first 10 years after the repeal and loss of 100,000 jobs in each subsequent year. 
80,000 jobs to 100,000 jobs. Similarly, a study by the Texas A&M Ag and Food Policy Center determined that more than 97% of the representative farms in its 30-state database, including North Dakota, would be impacted by a proposal to eliminate stepped-up basis with an average additional tax liabilities totaling nearly $725,000 per farm. And while the administration claims these changes would impact only 2% of farms, they have provided no explanation or data to support those assertions. With the average age of farmers in our country now nearing 60 years old, now is not the time to burden the next generation of young farmers and ranchers with massive complex tax bills. In addition, the Biden administration has proposed to eliminate the use of 1031 like-kind exchanges, a provision that's been in the tax code since 1921, which allows farmers and ranchers to defer taxes on land transfers when they continue their investment in similar land assets. Farmers and ranchers use the 1031 like-kind exchange for many reasons. This includes consolidating land parcels to reduce time and money they spend moving equipment, supplies, and commodities from one place to another. Producers also consolidate crop land closer to their livestock, barns, crop storage facilities, or even as part of the estate planning process to help young or beginning farmers join their business. In short, in the middle of the recovery from a global pandemic, President Biden is proposing a massive tax and spend bill that will harm our economic recovery, increase the cost of consumer goods, reduce American competitiveness, competitiveness globally, and disproportionately hurt our small businesses, our farmers, and our ranchers. Instead, we need to get our debt and deficit under control, ensure U.S. competitiveness in the global marketplace while positioning our farmers, ranchers, and ag supply chain to continue to produce the highest quality, lowest cost food supply in the world. And with that, Mr. President, I yield the floor.